Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about finding the greatest common factor and this is going to be done Mrs. K's way which means I will be showing you guys how to find the greatest common factor using the bubble method. Let's look at a definition. I've actually written two definitions for you for the greatest common factor also known as the GCF. Please pause the video right now to write down both of these definitions and when you come back, we'll talk about both of them. So please pause the video now and write these in your math notebook. Why, hello again. Greatest common factor has two definitions I've written down. The first is the greatest common factor is the largest factor that divides evenly into a set of given numbers. The second definition is the greatest common factor is the largest factor two or more numbers have in common. These are both correct definitions, and I just wanted to let you see them written two different ways so you understand that the greatest common factor happens between two or more sets of numbers, and they both have something in common. Let's look at an example. For our example, I would like to try to find the greatest common factor for the numbers 12 and 18. Although I know that these are both even numbers and 2 goes into both, I want to see what the greatest common factor or the largest number that goes into both 12 and 18. So where I want to start is to create two factor trees, one for 12 and one for 18. If you forget how to do this, I recommend that you go back to Mr. Rag's prime factorization video you watched a few days ago. Now let's look at 12. 12 can be broken up into 2 times 6, and 6 can be broken up into 2 times 3. I want to circle my prime numbers, remembering that 2 is a prime number. And for 18, I know that that is 2 times 9, and 9 can be broken up into 3 times 3. So I also have my prime factorizations for that. So I'm going to write down my prime factorization for 12. 12 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3. And 18 is equal to 2 times 3 times 3. Now that I have that, I'm going to go on to the next page and try to find the greatest common factor these two numbers have in common. Looking at 12 and 18, I can see that my prime factorizations next to each other kind of helps me see whether they have in common. So I see that 12 has a 2, and so does 18. I also see that 12 has a 3, and so does 18. I'm going to highlight these numbers because I'm looking for the ones that they have in common, not the ones that they differ from. So that's why I did not do anything with the 2 and the 3 in the middle, since both 12 and 18 do not have a matching set. So now, now in order to find my greatest common factor for 12 and 18, I want to write just the number that both numbers have in common. So I want to write a 2 and a 3 because those are the numbers they have in common. So although I was blocking off two twos and two threes, I'm just looking to know that they have one two in common and one three in common. Now I want to multiply those numbers because I'm looking for the greatest number they have in common, so I know that is equal to six. So both 18 and 12 have a greatest common factor of of Six. Let's do one more example. 28 and 42. 28 goes into 2 and 14. 14 goes into 2 and 7. 42 is 2 and 21. And 21 is into 7 and 3. I circle all of my prime factors and I want to rewrite them underneath. 28 is equal to 2 times 2 times 7, and 42 is equal to 
2 times 3 times 7. I want to circle all the common factors, so I see that 28 has a 2 and a 7, and 42 also has a 2 and a 7. Thus, my greatest common factor is equal to my 2 times 7, or 14. So from Callie and Mrs. K, thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great day. See you in class.